I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to do this time of year is to sit in the dark with just the light of my Christmas tree on. I love that. I love sitting at night when there's really not much else going on except for the dog wandering around and things like that in my house. But the Christmas lights are on and it's just quiet. We're going to talk about a night a long time ago where some stuff happened and it was quiet, but not in really the way you want it. What we need for this lesson today is your Bible, of course. You're also gonna need a piece of paper. You're gonna need a red marker or crayon or something like that, and a pair of scissors. And if you've got some paper clips around, two paper clips. If not, you can use your fingers for that part too. But, all right, let's get started. So, what we're gonna talk about tonight is found in the book of Exodus. So if you think about your Bible, you've got your Old Testament and your New Testament. And the Old Testament's the bigger part at the beginning. Exodus is the second book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus. Genesis has um, creation, Noah, things like that. The Exodus moves into this time when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, and then as they move into the promised land that God had promised them. If you see the little dog wandering in the background, don't worry, it's almost his dinner time. Um, so back then, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. They had been slaves in Egypt for about 400 years. And they just kept saying, God, you keep promising you're gonna take us out of here. We'd like to go now. Can you please take us? Can you please rescue us? Now, God always knows what's best for us. And he wants what's best for us. But what we always have to remember is God's timing and our timing might not always be exactly the same thing. So the Israelite people, God's people, kept saying, it's time, it's time, God, we want you to deliver us, take us out of this awful place, stop us from being slaves. And God wanted what was best for them. He wanted that, but it wasn't quite the right time yet. So when it became the right time, God used a man named Moses, who had been born an Israelite. Um, his mother had rescued him by placing him in a basket. He'd been found by an Egyptian princess. Uh, he'd been raised as an Egyptian. And then later in life, he discovered he was not an Egyptian. He witnessed a crime happening against what, an Israelite slave. And he he avenged that person and ended up having to leave Egypt and spend some time wandering around in the wilderness. God talked to him through a burning bush, sent him back to Egypt, and his plan was that Moses was going to lead God's people, the Israelite people, out of Egypt. So, the way that happened was Moses kept going to the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and saying, let my people go. And Pharaoh would say no, and God would send a plague. Now, a plague is just um, a big, strange, weird, unnatural happening that happens at a really big scale. So something really big, really major, that's weird and unusual, that would be a plague. God sent frogs, he sent flies, um, he sent a sickness to the livestock, boils on people's skin, all sorts of things. He sent darkness, he sent fire raining from heaven, and then he sent the last plague, the 10th plague. And that plague happened at night. Now I want you to take your scissors and your piece of paper. And the first thing I want you to do is cut the top off your piece of paper, just like this. Doesn't have to be fancy, just cut it off like that so that you have a strip. Okay, now you're gonna cut off the sides of your piece of paper as well. Again, doesn't have to be neat or tidy. You're just gonna end up with two long strips of paper that are the same size. One, two, and a shorter strip of paper as well. So what I want you to do is take your long pieces of paper like this, and you're gonna take your shorter piece and put it on top. Now this is where the paper clips come in. Okay, so I placed my shorter piece on top. I'm just gonna use my paper clip. Oh goody, the cat's getting on the table. Don't you love it when that happens? And I've got one there, and then I'm gonna put the other piece right 
here. Oh, it's not working very well for me here. Gizmo, are you going to come interrupt my lesson? I think he might. Okay, so this is what you want to end up with, okay? Again, if you don't have paper clips, just hang on to it. Um, okay, so what happened that night was God sent a special, special plague. And it was called the plague of the Passover. And God was going to send an angel that he was going to come and go through all the land of Egypt. And he was going to kill the firstborn son in every household. But God told his people, the Israelite people, the people that believed in God, if you believe in me, you will take a lamb and you will slaughter it and you will take its blood and put it on the posts of your house. So let's take our red pen and take the posts of the house here and we're going to put blood on the post of our house. Okay, doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but here you go. We've got some blood there on the house post. So that's what the Israelite people did. They put the, the lamb's blood onto their doorpost of their house, and then they sat in the darkness. And during the night, just what God had said happened. The angel came through the land of Egypt and passed over all the different houses of the Israelite people that had the blood on the doorposts. And of the Is Egyptian houses that did not have the blood on the doorposts, their firstborn son died. Excuse me for one second. Say hello, Gizmo. And say goodbye, Gizmo. Okay. In the morning, all of the firstborn sons of the Egyptian people had died. And so Pharaoh said, you know what? Go, get out, go. And the people were so excited. They were like, yay, God did know what was best for us. Yay, all of this is wonderful. So they left. And then Pharaoh kind of thought about it for a while and decided, you know what? He just lost an awful lot of slaves and he was very angry and he decided to send his army to go bring them back. Well, the army started chasing the Israelite people and they came to the edge of the Red Sea. Once they got to the Red Sea, God again, he wanted what was best for them. So he parted that Red Sea and the Israelites were able to walk through. The sea came back together again and the Egyptian army was unable to cross like the Israelites had. So God knew what was best for his people and God wanted what was best. It wasn't necessarily what the Israelite people thought, and sometimes it wasn't the same timing as the Israelite people thought, but God always wants what's best for us. But keep in mind, that's not always what's best for you. Now, as we get close to Christmas, I want you to think about something with this Passover doorpost. I want you to take your paper clips out, okay, of your doorpost like this. Now what I want you to do is slide your two big pieces together like this and move that long piece right there to the middle. Do you see what we make when we do that? It makes a cross. See, the Israelite people, they had one goal in mind and that's what they wanted. But God wants what's best for us. And he thinks far beyond what we can think of. And he knew he wasn't just going to take them out of Egypt. He was going to be moving them to something even better. Something that was Jesus. And Jesus coming and Jesus dying on the cross for their sins. So that a lamb would not be needed anymore when people did something wrong. As we get close to Christmas time, I want you to remember that we celebrate Christmas because Jesus came. But this is why Jesus came. Jesus came to die on the cross. Christmas is wonderful. We celebrate his birth. We celebrate that he's God's son. But this was the reason why he came. Because God wanted what was best for us. And this was what was best for us. That Jesus would give his life and that he would pay the price for our sin on the cross. So that when we die, when we're done living here on earth and we die that little death and we go and we're ready to spend eternity, we can spend that eternity in heaven with God because we believe in Jesus. So as you get ready for Christmas, 
keep that in mind. God wants what's best for you, and he provided Jesus for that reason. Have a great week.